Okay guys, so we're going to finish up the Stone Age Time Periods worksheet. You need to either get your worksheet out of your notebook or you need to open it in your Word document and continue typing on it. We are going to work on the Neolithic Time Period today and we're going to hopefully finish that column. Alright, so as usual, there's always other names for the Paleolithic, the Mesolithic, and the Neolithic is no exception. The Neolithic is also known as, so aka, the New Stone Age. Neo means new, so that would be where they got the name, the New Stone Age. So we had the Old Stone Age, the Middle Stone Age, or the Late Paleolithic Stone Age, and the New Stone Age. Now we're going to move to the first column. Where did they live? Now if you've been paying attention in class, you know that through thousands of years, they have progressed from living in caves and overhangs, under overhangs, I should say, to mammoth bone houses and pit houses to what they're now living in in the Neolithic time period, and that is huts and tents. And yes, it's exactly what you're thinking it might look like. Tents with wood and poles and animal hide wrapped around it. So their housing is getting a little bit better and a little bit better, and as we go through time, you see that the housing is getting it continues to get better, even up to the point of the houses that we live in today. All right, the types of tools. We know that in the Paleolithic time, they use simple tools, rocks, sticks, twigs, anything they could find in nature that would help them do a job. Their job would be to get food and survive. In the Mesolithic time, we know that they started making canoes. They started making spears, bows and arrows, the hand axe, in the Neolithic time, they're getting even better at making their tools. So they're beginning to make saws, drills, weapons, and no, not for war yet, because I know you keep thinking when you hear weapons, you want to think of war. No, that's not it. They are still in the mode of survival. Okay, so saws, drills, weapons, and polished sharpened stones. Now I grabbed a picture of these polished sharpened stones that I want to show you so that you can get an idea what their tools look like. And let me move these words. Okay, These are some of the polished sharpened tools that they used. And yeah, this may look like metal, but it's not. If you look closely, this is stone. And so they have sharpened the edges to the point now that they're getting more a more fine cut. Okay, they're attaching it to uh, wood to make it look more like we would think of a knife. So they're polishing their stones. Let me show you a picture of a polished stone. Okay, these are pictures of some of the polished st stones that they had created that, that archaeologists have found, and you can see. This archaeologist has put numbers on this one because I'm sure he probably found these in around about the same area. Not 100% sure, but thinking that's probably what happened. But you can tell that they look shiny and slick. That's what happens when you polish a stone. All right, so let's move right along now. Okay, we're at the category domesticated animals. We know that the Paleolithic people did not have domesticated animals. Not dogs, not cats, not goats, cows, nothing. The paleo, or sorry, the Mesolithic people, on the other hand, started domesticating dogs. And if you remember, what was that purpose for? Mm, I hope you know that one. You might see it again. So the Neolithic people, if they are domesticating dogs, then the Neolithic people are definitely domesticating animals as well. So dogs are already domesticated, but we're going to go ahead and add that one. They also domesticated horses, cows, and I can't spell, goats, sheep, basically livestock. Now I think we all probably know a farmer, and you know that you see these on farms. So you ought to be recognizing that they are actually moving toward something that we still do today's society. Okay, and that is a really big deal, and we'll get to that in just a minute. 
All right, so dogs, horses, cows, goats, sheep, and livestock. And as you know, horses you can use for travel, cows, goat, and sheep, those provide food sources. So they are domesticating different kinds of animals now. All right, types of metal. We know that both the Paleo and the Mesolithic people had not found metal. They had not discovered it. They would not been able to get it, use it, anything. But the Neolithic people were different. They had discovered metal. They had discovered bronze and copper. And they were using these for guess what? You got it, tools. Whether it be tools to use in agriculture or tools to use for hunting. They were now discovering that bronze and copper tools were a lot easier to use than stone tools. Okay, I found you a picture that I wanted to show you of some bronze and copper tools. So I'm gonna get this off the screen and move the picture over. These are bronze and copper tools that archeologists have found during the, that were used during the Neolithic time period. If it's not the primary source, then it's a replica, but the replica is made off of what the original artifact would look like. Now, the way that you can tell the difference between bronze and copper is if you know anything about copper, copper turns green when it's exposed to air. So, okay, before I go on with that, I said copper turns green because it's exposed to air. It's exposed to the elements. By the elements, I mean if you drive by a restaurant and they have copper awnings around their windows or over their windows, sometimes those turn green and it's because they're outside. They're exposed to the elements and they undergo a chemical reaction and it gives them a shiny metal pale green outer layer. It can be cleaned off and you get back down to the, the original color of copper, which you can actually see right in here. But after exposure to the elements, it turns this green color. So that was a little side note that you probably didn't have to know. So there, I threw in a little science lesson in the middle of social studies. Woo, go me. Okay, let's move on to the next one now. We are at communication. We know that the Paleolithic people communicated by grunts and gestures. We know that the Mesolithic, Mesolithic people started using simple words like food, dog, rain, water. Well, the Neolithic people were beginning to use even more language to the point that vocabulary started developing. So they were developing vocabulary. Now, what exactly is vocabulary? Well, since you ask, I think I'll tell you. Vocabulary is a specific or a certain set of words used in a particular language. So if you're learning English, you learn the English vocabulary. If you're learning Spanish, you learn their vocabulary. So they were beginning to develop vo vocabulary, so that means their communication skills were getting even better. All right, moving right along. So now we're at the category art. We know that in the Paleolithic time period, they didn't have any art. They were too busy just trying to not be eaten by a saber-toothed tiger or killed or die from a poison berry. So they didn't have art because they were living off the land and they were living in the woods, in caves, under overhangs. So they were moving around too much. The Mesolithic people, on the other hand, though, they did have art. They did cave drawings and potteries because even though they were living in the mammoth bone houses and the pit houses, they were still having to travel to where the food went. So if the food leaves, you leave your house, and on the way, the journey to wherever it is that you're going, you are going to have to stay in a cave or under an overhang or build a temporary shelter or something to be able to stay in the dry and the warm a little bit better. So they did have cave drawings and they also had pottery. Well, if they had those things, then it would only seem to reason that the Neolithic people had even better art. So their art was wooden bowls. Even more pottery 
that was even more elaborate because now, since the Mesolithic people learned how to paint on the cave walls, you could use some of those same paints that they used to paint your pottery. You could also, when since you're making bowls, you could start to make bowls out of pottery, you could make cups, you could make pitchers. So they're making more elaborate pottery. Okay, this is even how much more elaborate it is. They were making mirrors. Now their mirrors, I would bet, were not made out of glass, but instead made out of metal. And they would polish that metal so it'd be real shiny and you could see your reflection in it. They also were doing wall paintings. They were making baskets. Whoops, I ran out of space again, sorry. Baskets. The Mesolithic people were wearing animal hides as their clothing. Well, if you're making baskets out of grass or vines or stalks, then you're probably finding plants that will produce something that you can make cloth. Do you know what kind of cloth they might be making? Hmm. Chances are you have lots of t-shirts or blue jeans that have made out of this same material. They also were making sculptures. So their artwork is getting even more elaborate through the years, which we would expect because as we go through time, you know things get more advanced. Art is no exception. It was becoming more advanced. Okay, now we're at religion. We know that both the Paleo and the Mesolithic people did not have a particular religion. However, the Neolithic people were not the same. Well, I shouldn't say that. They were advancing. So as they were becoming smarter, they also developed a religion. And their religion was based on the gods of the elements. Well, do you know what the four elements are? because that's what they base their gods on. I would bet that you do. One is fire, another is water, then we have air, and last but not least, the earth. So fire, water, air, and the earth. That was what they based their gods on. And all those things that are listed here are things that, in nat that are in nature. And we talked about that. We talked about how if they were going to have a religion and they were going to have gods, then it would be gods that were based on things in nature. And all these are. Okay, we're getting along pretty good. We're about halfway there. So now we're at architecture. I mean, sorry. Yes, well, yeah, that is right. Architecture. All right, we know that Paleo and Mesolithic people did not really have architecture, except Mesolithic, their architecture could have been their mammoth bone houses and their pit houses. But the Neo Neolithic people, they started making things even bigger, and they started making them better, and they started becoming more organized, and they started developing a society. So they started building, whoops, sorry, let me fix that there. Okay megaliths and cities and towns. Now we know that these people, the Paleolithic, they were hunter-gatherers. They were nomads. They moved constantly. We saw people beginning to settle temporarily in the Mesolithic time period. So they're advancing to a time period where they stay settled. And you're beginning to see this now when you see cities and towns being established. All right, let's keep going. We're at lifestyle now. We know that the lifestyle of the Paleolithic people was nomads, nomadic. The lifestyle of the Mesolithic people was that they were beginning to settle. The lifestyle of the Neolithic people was that they were settling, whoops, sorry, settling in cities and towns and they were developing, oh, I better move that, developing societies. Okay, what's a society? 
A society is when people are living together in a fairly organized community. Okay, so they're starting to settle in the cities and the towns. They're developing these societies and they're developing these communities. And so you're seeing, I just saw this word, I spelled it wrong. Whoops, there should be any in there. So you're beginning to see what we see in today's time period where you drive through towns and you drive through small communities. And so they were beginning to develop these. Government. We know that the Paleolithic and the Mesolithic people did not have an established government. However, because you are establishing cities and towns, you are establishing a government. And the type of government that you are beginning to establish is a monarchy. If you know what a monarchy is, I hope you do, <clears throat> a monarchy is when a king or a queen rules. And that king or queen is not going to want to give up power unless it's to someone in their family. So their whole family is a royal family of monarchs. All right, so they're establishing monarchs, which makes sense because if you have a city or a town, maybe one or two people may come forward that tend to be good leaders, and you recognize that in a person, so you want them to lead your town or community so that you see progression and that things get better and you start building more things and your community starts getting bigger and more people come in. So, so that would kind of make sense. All right, social classes. We know there were no social classes in Paleo and Mesolithic, but there were social classes in the Neolithic time period. And the reason there were social classes in the Neolithic time period is because jobs began to be specialized. Now what I mean by that is if I've discovered metal and I'm a really good metalsmith or blacksmith, then my job may be to make all the metal tools or weapons that my community needs. If I'm really good at making canoes, then my job may be to be a boat maker or a ship maker. So I'm gonna specialize in a job. And according to the job I have is gonna be according to the rank that I hold in my community or my society. So, Establishing, they started establishing societies based on jobs and specialization. That means, what are you good at? If I could spell <laughs> specialization, doing a job that you are really good at. So that's how their social classes started. It wasn't based on money. It wasn't based on how much money you have or didn't have. It was based on what your job was. All right, we're almost there. Hang on with me. All right, record keeping. Paleo, mm -mm. no, didn't have time, trying to survive. Mesolithic, we could say their cave drawings were a type of record keeping, but as far as written records or words, no. All right, but the Neolithic, guess what? They did have record keeping. Because their vocabulary is beginning to develop, then they start inventing writing. And with those writings, they can preserve stories. Because now they have a way to take the communication that they've had between each other when they were talking, now they're forming letters or really not letters like we think of letters. It was more like symbols to represent a thing. So instead of writing the word cat, C-A-T, you would have a symbol to, to, to represent cat. So they invented writing so that they could preserve their stories. So yes, they did have written records. All right, economy. Whenever we talk about economy in my class, we're talking about money. We know Paleo and Mesolithic people didn't have money. They had no need for money. But when we get to the Neolithic age and we start developing societies and towns and cities and you start developing a monarchy and religion and you start developing tools made of metals, 
then you are going to start having a type of economy, but not necessarily with money. Their economy was based on trade. So, whoops, try that again. Trade, or you might know it as bartering. So their type of economy was trade or bartering. You have 50 goats, and I have 100 sheep and you need some sheep for wool, and I need some goat's milk. So I might trade you five sheep for two goats. Trading and bartering. And that was their type of system to get the things that they needed. All right, last, uh, well, we've got jewelry, but all right, last one. On, we'll get, never mind, let's just move on. Okay, food source. We know that the Paleolithic were hunter-gatherers. They ate berries, nuts, and raw meat. We know that the Mesolithic people learned how to control and make fire, so they started cooking their meat, but they also ate nuts and berries and fruit. But with the Neolithic people, something very, very important happened. They began to learn how to farm. All right. So since they were able to farm, they could now have grain. Come on, computer, you can do it. Grain. They've domesticated horses, cows, sheep, and goat, so now they can have poultry because they can get eggs from their chicken. Whoops, sorry, I spelled that wrong. Poultry. They can also have, well, okay, let me back that up. They have grains. They could have chicken so that they could actually eat chicken. They could also use the eggs from chicken. Okay, they also still have, let me move this up a little, fruit. They have, um, they still have meat from the game that, because they, just because they started farming does not mean that they did not hunt anymore they did continue to hunt. We still hunt today. Some of you, your dads, your uncles, your grandpas, your, maybe even your grandmothers, maybe your mothers, maybe your sisters, your brothers, they go hunting. We still hunt. So just because we're farming doesn't mean, oh, well, we don't have to go hunting anymore. Um, you know, whatever. No, they still hunt. So grain, poultry, eggs, fruit, meat. The cows can give us milk. And they now have agricultural produce. In other words, veggies. So, the big deal about this is, for the food source, is that this time period, when we shift from hunter-gatherers to farming, is called, you ready for this? The Neolithic Revolution, or the Agricultural Revolution. Sorry, I had a typo in agricultural. I just fixed it. Okay, so the Neolithic Revolution or the Agricultural Revolution, you need to remember that. The shift from hunting and gathering to farming is called the Neolithic Revolution or the Agricultural Revolution. That is huge, okay, because if it hadn't been for them learning how to farm, we would still be hunters and gatherers. And I don't know about you, but I really don't want to have to stop in the middle of the day to go to the woods next door and try to find a squirrel or a rabbit to eat for lunch. So thank you, Neolithic caveman, Neolithic man, Neolithic people, peeps. Thank you for learning how to farm and for causing the agricultural revolution to occur. Because if it weren't for you, we would be still eating squirrel from the woods next door for lunch. Then I don't like squirrel. Okay, so anyways, the Neolithic revolution, the agricultural revolution. All right, now jewelry, I'm just gonna tell you, you can write this one down. Eh, never mind. I'll move it back up. Hang on. All right, I've added it here. We know the Paleolithic people, they didn't have time for jewelry. 
The Mesolithic people, they would put bones around their neck on maybe a piece of vine or animal, a strip of animal hide, a piece of leather. They would also um, use seashells and stones. Now the Neolithic people, if you remember, some of their types of tools and some of their types of metal were copper and bronze. And so a lot of people still like their jewelry made of copper and bronze. Actually, some people wear copper bracelets around the wrist because it's supposed to help with arthritis. So if they're making their tools and weapons out of metal, then it would only make common sense to know that these people also like their jewelry out of copper and bronze. And that does not mean that they didn't still wear jewelry with a bone tied around their neck. We still do. We, bought, we buy them at the beach. It's, uh, sorry, I don't know where that video just stopped, so I'm going to pick up where I think it might have stopped. We still wear bones around our neck. We buy them at the beach. It's a shark's tooth. So, yeah, they still wore stuff like that, too, but they made jewelry out of copper and bronze. Okay, so we now have this chart done. So once it's done, if it's on paper, put it back in your notebook. If it's on the computer, save it, and we will try print to the library maybe tomorrow. All right, we'll just see. We'll get it printed sometime. All right, hope you got this done. See you, bye.